Let's take a look at some problems involving how to use torque. So we're going to look at first a very simple problem, uh, asking when tightening a bolt, you're pushing perpendicularly. So what that tells us right away when we said perpendicularly is that we have an angle here, and that angle is going to be equal to 90 degrees. So we know we have an angle of 90 degrees when we're pushing perpendicularly on a wrench with a force of 165 newtons. So we can right away write down that there's a force that's equal to 165 newtons. And we're applying that force at a distance of 0.14 meters from the center of the bolt that we're trying to tighten with this wrench. So that means I have a radius that's equal to 0.14 meters. And I'm asked how much torque am I exerting in newtons times meters relative to the center of the bolt. So a uh, picture of what we have, here's our bolt, and here's our wrench kind of wrapped around that bolt. And I'm going to take the wrench at the handle, and I'm going to be pushing on this handle to actually turn this bolt. So hopefully I'm going to loosen this thing up and, and kind of turn it around. So I'm applying my force at some distance r from the center of this bolt. Now to find the torque of this, I look at the definition of torque. Torque is defined as being equal to r times f times the sine of some angle where r is the distance of your lever arm. It's how long your lever is. It's the distance from the center of whatever you're turning to wherever you're applying the force. F is the force that you're actually applying, and the sine of the angle is the angle between the force and the uh, radius that, over which you're applying this force. So they told us right away all these, var all these variables in the problem. So we can just plug and chug. Basically have torque is equal to r, the radius, which they told us was 0.14, times F, which is the force, which they told us was 165, times the sine of the angle, sine of 90. And when you plug all your numbers into this, you'll come out with a torque equal to 23.1 newtons times meters. So that's a basic torque problem, but they can get fancier and we can work with a field called statics. And that's what you'll do a lot of times in uh, kind of PT applications when working with uh, muscles in the human body. You'll be interested in statics. So let's do a problem involving the human body and using statics uh, on muscles. So in this problem, we have two muscles in the back of the leg that pull on the Achilles tendon as shown in figure 9.37. So this is in the OpenStax College Physics open source textbook. Just look at number 27 and you will find this figure. I've redrawn it below for our convenience. Um, though it's not quite as artistic. Uh, what total force do these two forces on the, acting on the Achilles tendon actually exert? So I want to add up these two forces, F2 and F1. Now, in order to do that, I need to break them up into components and see what kind of force they're exerting on this Achilles tendon, which my Achilles tendon would be the, the muscle that I kind of have, the muscles that I kind of have um, right here in the leg and, and kind of over here, uh, kind of over here. Okay, so I need, to, I need to think about this, and I th need to think about how to solve this problem. So in statics, when I'm trying to solve for forces, I know that the, the forces um, are, are resulting in no motion. Uh, and, and when I'm trying to add up forces in statics, I need to keep in mind uh, that force is a vector. And since force is a vector, I can't just straight up add these two forces together. So I can't just add... 200 and 200 to get 400 newtons of force acting on this Achilles uh, tendon. I need to add forces in the x and y directions. I need to treat x and y separately. So I have to break this uh, for these forces up into their requisite components. So I have some force acting in the x direction and some force acting in the y. So I can imagine a little bit of F2 going up and a little bit of F2 going over, and I can do the same thing for F1. A little bit of F1 goes up, and a little bit of F1 goes over. And I can break these into the X and Y components. So do the X component first, for the X component for F1X. F1X, I can see, is kind of in this little triangle that I can draw. So I have my nice green triangle, F1X, 
is kind of the opposite side of this triangle from where my angle is. I look at my angle, I go to the opposite side, I get my F1x. So that means my F1x has to be F1 times the sine of 20. And then I can do the same thing for F1, uh, F2x. F2x, and if I look at this triangle, I can see F2x is on the opposite side of the triangle, so I get F2 times the sine of 20. Except here I can see F2 is acting in the opposite direction. F2 is acting to the left, so F2x has to be negative. And I can find the total force in the x direction, F total for the x direction is the sum of those two forces. So I can add these because they're going in the same direction. As long as I break them up into their components, I can add them together, plus F2x. So if I plug and chug my numbers in, I can find um, F1x is going to give me 68.4 by plugging in 200 times the sine of 20. And in this particular problem, I can do the same thing for F2. F2 is also 200, so F2x is 200 times the sine of 20 as well. Except F2x has this negative out front because it's going in the opposite direction. So we have a negative 68.4. And when I add these two together, I can see that F total X gives me zero. So there's no total X force acting to pull my Achilles tendon in either the left or the right direction. Now I can do the same procedure, I can do it in the y direction. So in the y direction, we're going to see something a little bit different. So in the y direction, we have F1y. That's going to be equal to F1 times the cosine of 20. And I can see that in my little right triangle. If I look at my right triangle for F1y, I go up and I go over. When I go up, that's my Fy, and that is adjacent to this 20-degree angle in the triangle I've drawn by breaking up into my components. So F1y has to be equal to 200 times the cosine of 20. So all I'm doing here is plugging in my F1 equal to 200 and my cosine 20, which is my angle. So I get 188 newtons. F2y, I can do the same procedure. And we should be able to recognize that F2y is going to be F2 times cosine of 20. Physics really builds on itself, so everything that we did in previous chapters is coming back uh, to repeat in these chapters. So we can make our triangle from F2. We go up and we go now to the left, over. I see that my F2y is actually going up as well, so that's going to be positive. I see it's adjacent to this 20-degree angle, so that's why I've got my cosine of 20. I can plug in my numbers, and I will get also 188 newtons. So my total force in the y direction acting on this Achilles tendon is going to be 180 is F1y plus F2y. So I add up these two y forces, F1y plus F2y to write it out in very good detail. And we got F total y is equal to 376 newtons. Okay, so now I need to use these to find the total force. So we're gonna kind of do a general, general approach uh, that will work. There are some shortcuts we could apply in this particular one, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna apply those so that we can get as general as possible. So if I want to find the total force, the total force I can imagine is, is kind of if I draw a right triangle from this F total X and if this F total Y. So I have some F total X that goes over. I have some F total Y that goes up. And I have some final uh, F total. That is the hypotenuse of the triangle formed by these other two. Okay. So this is the same kind of approach that we followed in um, some force problems. This is the same kind of approach you follow in a projectile problem. We're just now applying it into a statics problem. Um, and we can apply this with torque as well. Same exact uh, procedure. Now what I notice here is to find F total from these two components, it's going to be equal to the square root of F total X 
squared plus f total y squared. And that we know from the Pythagorean theorem. And now I can plug in my f totals in the x and y directions respectively. So f total is going to be equal to 0 squared because I had no force in the x direction. They cancel each other out. Plus 376 squared. And I need to take the square root of all of that to find that my final f total is going to be equal to 376 newtons. And that's going to be entirely in the up direction because we only had forces going in the y direction. Now, if this wasn't the case, if I didn't have only forces going in the y direction, I could find the direction from this triangle. So the direction would come, it would be this angle right here, is my theta, and I can find the direction by saying the tangent of theta is equal to f total y divided by f total x. So I can see that that's the tangent of this triangle, and I can solve this equation to see that theta, the angle or the direction for these forces, for this total force, is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of f total y over f total x. So that's how we can do problems involving statics, and this would work if we were solving for forces, for torques, um, for various different quantities.